Now let's take a look at the equipment we're going to need to make our paper mache bowls. We need plain flour, salt, a whisk out of the kitchen cupboard, a mixing bowl, we need a measuring cup and a tablespoon. We're going to need some hot water, that's why I have the kettle here. We need some cling wrap. Now you might need an adult to give you a hand with this. I get in a bit of a mess when I use cling wrap. We need a bowl. I've got a cereal bowl here, but you can use one of those plastic bowls that you get that you throw away. I've got a tray. I'm going to use that because I'm going to make a bit of a mess. You can use newspaper if you like, but I think a tray is a really good idea. I've got a paintbrush. Uh, to help me get the paper out of the piece that I'm going to use. You can use a spoon if you like. I've got scissors to help me cut up my paper. Now I also have these wonderful books that were going to get thrown away at the library. They were falling apart. Make sure you use old books that were going to fall apart. Nobody wants them anymore. They've got these fantastic pictures inside. This one's an old Enid Blyton cooking book. And this one's The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe. And they've got wonderful pictures inside that I'm going to put in my bowl. And this one here, I'm really excited. It's a dinosaur book. Rawr, fantastic. And here... I've got a cloth to help me clean up. Now come closer. I've got a bit of a secret about cleaning up. My mum and dad nearby. Come closer. Here's my secret. Mum and dad are really good at helping you to clean up. We're going to make our paste, but first of all, we need an adult to get us some hot tap water. Are they doing that for us? Excellent, and we need you to measure out some flour into a cup. So one cup of plain flour into the bowl. And then we need to measure out two tablespoons of salt into the bowl as well. One tablespoon, then two tablespoons. And get your whisk and mix those together. And while you're at it, get the lumps out of there as well, out of that flour. Did the adult get that hot water for you? Wonderful. Now get your cup again and get them to pour that tap water into the cup for you and pour that into the flour. That's one cup. And get your whisk again and stir that very carefully until it starts mixing into the flour. Now ask the adult to pour you another cup. We don't know exactly how much water we're going to need. Maybe five cups. So this is two cups. Pour that in very carefully. And stir again. We'll do it one cup at a time and get those lumps out. How is yours going? Mine's looking pretty good. Still a bit thick, so I will put a third cup of hot water in. And stir it again. I'm happy with three cups of hot water. I'm liking the consistency of my paste with three cups of hot water and one cup of flour and two tablespoons of salt. So I'm going to leave my paste at that. I'll keep stirring, make sure that I have all of those lumps out.
then I will set that aside to cool. Let's get our bowl ready. I have it sitting here upside down. Now remember when I said I get all tangled up with plastic wrap? You might like to get mum or dad to give you a hand. Put your first piece of plastic wrap over the top of your upside down bowl and smooth it out. Turn your bowl over and tuck those edges inside over the rim like that. Then get a second piece of plastic wrap and this is where it gets sticky. Push that plastic wrap inside and then turn your bowl over and make a little mat like that. All ready. I showed you these three books when I showed you all the equipment we needed for our paper mache bowls. I'm only going to use one of these books because what I want to do is cut out some of these wonderful pictures and make a showcase of them on the inside and the outside of my bowl. I'm going to start off by cutting out some of these characters and some of these special words and setting them aside before I start tearing out the paper. Let's get started. see that I have lots and lots of words and pictures for my paper mache bowl. I even cut out nice straight strips with my scissors to make my bowl nice and neat. But then I thought I do like the edges when I rip the paper like this. Now I can take my time and try to rip them nice and straight like that, but that does take a lot of time. Or I can go fast like that. So how about everybody, we all get ripping! Roll up your sleeves everybody. It's time to get messy and make sure you have a cloth nearby. We're ready to start. Now I have some pictures here that I'm going to put on the base of my bowl and I have to make sure that I put them face down because this is what we're going to see. Now dip your first picture in and make sure that that paste soaks into the fibres of the paper. And then rub off the paste, get some of that paste off and lay the image down, face down onto your bowl where you want it to go. The more layers you do, the stronger your bowl is going to be. I've done lots of ripping. I hope you did too. I did strips for my second layer. And this layer, I'm going to do the ripping layer. of paper just randomly. Now I'm going to use up 
all of the wonderful pictures and strips of paper that I cut up earlier. This is the exciting bit. It's all nice and dry. So now what we're going to do is take it off the cereal bowl. Pick it up and take the cling wrap off. Move this bit out and very carefully pull that cereal bowl out. It might be a bit tight. You might need mum and dad to help you with this bit. A bit tight. Pull. Pull it out. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that looks really good. I can see all my pictures. Now, we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut off all of these bits around the edge so I've got a nice rim. turned out to be another fantastic program. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye.